Welcome to the Naughty Child Podcast. With me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. I'll do everything before I leave. I need to find that bag on my coins. Alex Hartley took us off air in Brighton earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Pepper. We thought we were really funny, so why doesn't everyone else think we're really funny? But it's been the longest year ever, hasn't it? She's the most relaxed captain you've ever known. You got me through my flight from Mackay to Adelaide, so thank you very much. Well, my dog is now called Judy Anderson. <laughs> oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't through to the Eliminators, so I've got to change my team. Yeah. Yeah. Sophie Appleton's the worst, like having a child with you when she's on tour. I don't know whether it shows something about me or whether it just shows I'm a little bit stupid. So Polly, season 11. Yeah, so we, we've come back early. Um, and I'm glad we decided to come back because today there have been quite a few big announcements. There have. Yeah. Um, so shall we start with the first announcement that happened today? I think that would be very good. Um, so it was announced this morning that Anya Shubsol is retiring from international cricket, um, which I think in some ways was an expected decision. Um, and we, I think everyone knew there were going to be retirements after the World Cup, um, but it, it still is a bit strange to me. I think until England play their next game, I, I won't kind of appreciate the fact that she's not there. She had a really good World Cup, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely, um, yeah. You know, she took three wickets in the final. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's been such a great player. Yeah. A significant player. match winner. I think yeah. that's the best way to describe um, it. Over the years, it feels like she's still got a lot left in her. Yeah, but I think the decision makes sense. Yeah, it's best to retire when people ask the question why rather than the question when. Yeah, 100%. and um, and I think she's timed that really well. Yeah. She, I think she's weighed up the sort of next cycle of three mm. years, um, and thinking. You know, I don't think they're going to make it to the next World Cup. Mm. And of course now, because of the way the women's game has developed, yeah. if you are an international player who retires, mm-hmm. you can carry on playing yeah. for almost 12 months of yeah. the year in the different franchise tournaments mm-hmm. that are springing up. Yeah, and, and for your domestic team. So she plays for Western Storm, so presumably, I don't know how it would work in, in terms of her getting a contract, but presumably she would move on to a domestic contract in October. Um, and yeah, that it's really exciting actually when we've started seeing England players retire or get dropped and now they can go, go onto those contracts. Mm-hmm. And it's not just about having a stepping stone to aim to England. It's also after England, it's an option because actually I suppose if you went from, you know, playing for England to then never playing again, it's a very, very big jump. And especially someone like Anya, who still has a lot in her, it wouldn't make sense for her to like not get a contract for Western Storm. Um, and at the same time, it, I suppose it makes sense in terms of you were saying about she might she might be thinking, I'm not going to make it to the next World Cup. Well, like teams are a cycle. They, they never stay the same. And actually, you've got Izzy Wong, Lauren Bell, MR Lott knocking on the door, wanting a place in the England squad. Um, and so there are people that can fill that role. So it makes the job a bit simpler, I suppose. Yeah. And it's, a, you know, it's also a great opportunity for someone to step up now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned those names and there'll be others mm-hmm. as well who, who see this as a really good opportunity um, uh, to step up. Tash Barron yeah, uh, yeah, uh, comes to mind as well. Frey Davis. As well. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see what the England team looks like mm. by the end of the summer. Yeah. Um, with this retirement, if there are any other retirements, you know, whether mm. Catherine Brunt stops at this point, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll find out shortly, I, I guess. But um, I could imagine that the England team could look quite different. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, because, yeah, I, I, I guess it's one of those things that it is quite sad when someone retires, but at the same time, it's, it's also really exciting mm-hmm. on two parts. Firstly, for, you know, what, whatever they go on to in the future, whether they play regionally or they go into coaching or anything like that. But also it's the next generation coming through. And it's, I suppose, if someone hadn't retired and you wouldn't have got, haven't, uh, I can't even say it, haven't had got that first opportunity 
to play as like a teenager essentially and you've got to allow that generation to come through it's the circle of life the circle of life <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you know mm. and actually this is the it's the gateway to legendary status yeah. isn't it so you know Anya's going to be around for a few more years playing mm. domestically but we can say we saw the great yeah. Anya Shrubsole yeah. play for England we yeah. saw her in that match mm. yeah it's like the thing she is known for and that is pretty cool um and it is I really like I suppose when people retire seeing all the the tributes on Twitter and just like stories of how that person has impacted people's lives mm-hmm. um and I think with someone like Anya <coughs> don't well, get emotional though. no <laughs> I haven't had enough water today in the last hour my throat's gone really dry um I suppose it's I don't remember what I say. oh yeah I suppose with Anya it's a bit different that compared to other people there's one thing that she is very very known for and it's that World Cup final and that impacted a lot of people and I think Sarah Glenn put up a really nice post of it was loads of footage of the World Cup and then footage that she took herself from the crowd and it was like this was the moment I realized you know I want to play for my country and I think Ellie Threlkeld in that crowd, Izzy Wong, like so many people who are aiming for that England team and some of them are probably even in the England team now were there on that day and I suppose it yeah it's been nice all day to see people like saying how she's impacted their lives. Are you sure there are only 24,000 people there on that day because the number of people who claim to be there on that day See, counts more yeah, than 24,000. This 000. is the thing I feel like some people <laughs> I claim to I have got evidence of being there um yeah, I, th- I feel like some people weren't. Actually. Sarah Glenn was definitely there. That was her own mm-hmm. footage, so you can prove that. Um, but no, and as we've mentioned before, like that World Cup final was so special. And yeah, the only name I remember from that was Anya Shubsol. So yeah. whether that says something about either her significance or my lack of concentration, I don't know. Um, but no, she's been a significant part of my cricket journey. And she's just a really good player. Mm. Um and yeah, big shoes to fill, really. Big hoofs to fill. Big hoofs. <laughs> no. Um, are we at an end with discussing that? Do you think? Could you go over your oh, Well, I could talk about Anya for a long, fair, long time. I probably could. We need to get her on the podcast. I've yeah. tried to message her before, but if any, Anya, I know you're a big fan of the pod. <laughs> um, <laughs> get in touch. Mm-hmm. Get in touch, and uh, it'll be great to chat through your amazing, legendary mm-hmm. career. Yeah, indeed. Um, so another announcement today, which I think is probably less of a shock. Um, Alex Hartley stepping down from the captaincy at Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, so in pre-season stuff, and when um, Thunder went to Dubai to play against the UAE a couple of weeps ago, months ago, um, Ellie Threlkeld captained. Um and so you would imagine she's natural placement. Um, but yeah, Alex has been working her socks off all winter doing commentary and hasn't played much at all um, and hasn't really been able to do any preseason. You know, she worked on the men's ashes, the women's ashes, and the World Cup. Uh, so understandably, I suppose, hasn't had that time to. I mean, they are a close team, but hasn't had that kind of preseason bonding time, I suppose. Um, but also it's a lot of pressure being captain um, and there's a lot of like sassy things you have to do she's already very busy and I think she just wants to try and enjoy her cricket this season I I think so yeah and she's made it she's kind of I mean not made it clear but Mm. hinted strongly that this could be her last year of of playing cricket professionally anyway Um, I've said before she is a decent um, you know, regional level yeah. cricketer, but she is a world class commentator. Yeah, 100%. and um, and actually, that's where her future lies. Mm-hmm. And and of course, it's not just about the preseason that she's missed, but there'll be a BBC schedule in front of her for the Test yeah. match, for example. Yeah, we want you to, as part of the uh, the women's Test match commentary team. Mm. Well, that's going to overlap with some Thunder games. Yeah, no and the, yeah, some of the England games do in fact. So, like the game at Worcester, that clashes with. A Thunder game, it's like, well, what's going to happen there then? Yeah, and and um, 
so I, I think she needs to just manage the, mm. her time a little bit because it would be great to see her play uh, quite a bit this season, mm. but also it would be great to hear her commentating really as good. well. Yeah. Um, and certainly what became evident last year is that she was pelting around the country. Yeah, just seemed crazy. Yeah. You know, Unsustainable. Yeah. Um, and so she needs to make a decision mm. about it. Um, so Alex, I know you're a big <laughs> big fan of the pod. She replied to my tweet today, so she must be a big fan. Yeah. Um, I, so we just wish you well for the mm-hmm. season and we yeah. look forward to seeing you playing for Thunder. Yeah. And uh, and look forward to hearing you on the radio. Yeah. It'd be a shame not to see her as captain, though, because from all accounts, she's a very funny captain. So well, was it Georgie Boyce said? Oh, she's the most re- relaxed captain you've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's in our intro. <laughs> Which I thought, oh, that's such a good quote. Um, so, yeah, a lot of kind of big news today. Mm-hmm. So on to Fair Break, because Fair Break is happening at the start of May. It's a tournament happening in Dubai. It's an invitational, like, private tournament um, with players from all over the world. And when I say all over the world, name a country and someone will be there from it. I mean, this is really unusual. We've talked about it a little mm-hmm. bit before, haven't yeah. we? But this is... I think this is massive. Yeah. And I think it's strategically really important. And it's really strange, the whole idea of a privately funded yeah. tournament. <laughs> the only previous ones I can think of, were Kerry Packer mm-hmm. in, in Australia in the 1970s, which mm-hmm. was hugely controversial. Yeah. And, you know, anyone that played for him was banned mm-hmm. from playing uh, oh, Test cricket for Australia. Gosh. And then Alan Stanford <laughs> is the other one the that comes to mind. Alan Stanford, yeah. Um, now, I think this falls into neither it's of those categories. It's a bit different. Yeah. Uh, but it's really interesting that the whole ethos behind mm-hmm. it is to give a platform to associate yeah. uh, member countries, players, to play a, in a serious, high-quality mm-hmm. tournament yeah. alongside some world stars. Yeah, and this is the thing. I think because... Like, it, it is being taken so seriously in terms of the coaches they've got in. I think Lydia Greenway's going over, Charlotte Edwards, you know, they are really investing in this. Mm. And the passion behind it is clearly about boosting the profile of associate players and giving them opportunities. Because, I mean, as you'll hear from our guests later on, associate players playing for their country don't get that many opportunities to play. Mm. Um, and... I think I think it might have been Tina Goff that said, you know, you go to these tournaments and stuff when you're playing like the European qualifiers, you don't really know who you're playing because the last time you played Scotland was three years ago and you have no idea what their standard is. So this will just give an amazing opportunity for also people all over the world to get to know each other, which is something I love about franchise cricket. So to have this and have it on a much bigger scale of having like, 13 different countries in a team is is really cool. Uh, yeah, and it is. It's lovely when you hear those mm-hmm. stories of friendships across yeah. countries and cultures that are made, in, you know, in those uh, tournaments that happen around mm-hmm. the world. Yeah. So only two full teams have been announced so far. So that's the Warriors and the Tornadoes. Um, half of the Barmy Army team has been announced, which, just saying, I already want to be on the Barmy Army team Absolutely. just by the name. Um, but I'll go through the Warriors a bit and have a look. So in terms of you know, big teams. Um, so for West Indies, you've got Hayley Matthews and uh, Shamila Connell, I think her name is. Uh, South Africa, Mignon Dupre, guest oh. on the podcast. Um, and also Catherine Bryce, who plays for Scotland, and also Lightning, has been on the podcast. Um, Georgia Redmayne um, for Australia. So she played in the 100 for Welsh Fire last year. So we know a bit about her. Um, but then quite a few players I haven't really heard of before. So Yasmin Khan for Namibia got players. So the captain of USA, I think, is captaining the Warriors. Um, you've got Sri Lanka, Hong Kong, Philippines, Ireland, UAE, Botswana. So really mixed team. And it, I think it's just going to be exciting to get to know players that we don't know. But we said this with the World Cup. Yeah. It's that like I didn't know a lot of the Pakistan or Bangladesh team, but I'm really invested in some of them. I think, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that team is looking very strong. Um, Tornadoes, so players you might have heard of before. Stefani Taylor, West mm-hmm. Indies. Uh, Sunelus for South Africa. Um, two Pakistan players, so Leah Riaz, I think her name is, and Diana Baig, so they're both playing Pakistan. Um, two New Zealanders, Katie Martin and Sophie Durant. So Katie Martin's been on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and our guest today, Stair Callis from New Zealand. Um, Netherlands. New Z- oh, did I say New Zealand? Oh. Both being N-E, so it's easily yeah. Yeah, next up. They were next to each other on, on my <laughs> word document. Um, also got players from Canada, Austria, um, Hong Kong again, Malaysia, Nepal, Thailand, Zimbabwe. So, again, like as we go down the list, there are so many different countries being named in countries you don't even think would play cricket. So that's really cool. I like Austria. I'm, I'm the last country I think is playing cricket. Um, and the Barmy Army team so far. So Deandra Dottin and um, Shemaine Campbell for West Indies. Our number one, Roberta from Brazil. Um, and Laura Cardoso from Brazil as well. Um, we've also got oh, Fatima Sana from Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Um, then we've got players from Rwanda, UAE, Hong Kong, Vanuatu. Fantastic. Um, Nepal and Bangladesh. So looking very strong again. And yeah, there's so many countries. Um, and there's still so many teams to be announced um, and so many players to be announced even. Yes. Oh, of course, we know that Danny Wyatt's going to Danny be playing. Wyatt's playing. <laughs> <laughs> no spoiler from us. <laughs> Um, but the Barmy Army team, I'm, I mean, I've decided I'm supporting I'm them. By, just by the name. Right. And also Roberta. And Roberta as well, yeah. yeah. And I just, I hope, do you think, do you think they'll do Allegria? <gasps> that would be amazing. Or do you think that's got to be a Brazil thing? Well, no, I think Allegria Joy can go everywhere. So in the Barmy Army, show, the, have you seen the kits for the Barmy Army team? No. Oh, I'll have to show you, they're really, really cool. Um, the Warriors one is all right, to know it is kind of average Barmy Army team off the off the chart it's amazing so yeah we're definitely supporting Barmy Army team unless I don't know another team comes in which looks better <laughs> but at the moment we're going Barmy Army um but shall we get into our guest yes yes so a European cricketer yeah playing at fair break indeed before um so we spoke to Stair Callis who uh, plays for Northern Diamonds. She's on a professional contract there, so got contracted in October. And she's also just just moved to Birmingham Phoenix. So it's going to be local to us um, for four weeks of the summer, um, so which we're not even here. So, uh, But no, we're definitely going to go and see some Birmingham Phoenix games. In fact, we might have a little Australian guest with us for the 100. Oh, is that right? Lily is coming to the UK. L- Lily is coming to the UK. So she mentioned it on her podcast, How's That the Cricket Podcast, last week. Um, but we're going to have... Is she staying with she's us? She's going to come stay with us for a couple of days. Oh, better tidy up. <laughs> so it's going to be really exciting going around. Obviously, she knows the Australian players a lot better than mm-hmm. I do. So you know, hopefully we can have some chats with them and stuff and well you talk. and the thing is wherever lily goes yeah she meets she meets she bumps famous into cricketers. cricketers but you're the same do you feel i am the same so, so the two of you together will be like attracting all the cricketers will be ah. swarmed with famous people um so yeah i think we're going to try do uh ed baston old trafford and lords so that'll be really good fantastic um but yeah, mentioning our guests again. Uh, we chatted with Stair. There are a few Wi Fi issues, so I've tried to edit it to best as possible. But if there are blips, please bear with. It's the technology's fault. It's not. Yeah, it's not, it's not my fault. <laughs> um, but enjoy this chat with Stair. Okay, so to start off, what is your cricket story? How did you first get into cricket? Um, well, I started playing when I was about five years old. Uh, I started playing cricket at my local club here in Holland. Uh, the club here is like in summer, it's a cricket club. And in the winter, it's like a football club. Uh, my brother and cricket there. And then, yeah, my parents were divorced. So if uh, my brother had games or training or whatever, uh, I always had to come as well. Uh, and I always like practicing my swing and threw some balls on the sidelines and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then, I, well, my parents signed me up for the local club here. And yeah, there was, first of all, it was like on Friday night, it was a little bit local competitions, like friendlies and stuff. And then it's like under nines, under tens, under twelves. Uh, And there were not many girls playing cricket. So I always played with the guys uh, till I was about, well, 18 years old. So, um, yeah, that was it, really. (laughs) 
And how, how unusual is it for people to play cricket in, in the Netherlands? Yeah, it's a very known, known name, a uh, very known sport. Um, yeah, most of the people play like soccer or like football uh, or hockey. That's uh, like the two main sports. Um, it's not really on TV as well, so it doesn't really get much, much exposure. Um, people don't really go to schools to like promote it or give clinics and stuff like that. Um, I think it is getting bigger at the moment, but it's not. It's not as big as, well, for example, England or Australia or, yeah, that of countries. Yeah, it's interesting. I was I was reflecting on this because we, we were going to talk to you, and that in England we kind of have yeah. you know, football is the winter sport and cricket is the summer sport, and uh, yeah. so well, in, a, in a country like the Netherlands or in France or Germany or, or or anywhere in Europe, what are the summer sports that people play if they don't have cricket? Yeah, in Holland, it's yeah, pretty much hockey and uh, and football. I always played hockey. I I always combined it as well. I always combined uh, hockey and cricket as well. Uh, and when I went to Australia in 2018, uh, that was gonna be like leading into our winter, so hockey was about to start. But obviously, I went overseas, so uh, I kind of had to quit uh, for that year. And then I went to Australia for three years in a row, uh, so I couldn't well play cricket, uh, hockey anymore uh, but when I'm in Holland now and my friends are still asking what I what I'm doing the weekends or something like that I sometimes still play for their team because I really like yeah like to play and and stuff yeah tell us about uh, your time in Australia because you also were um, a rookie in the WBBL for Thunder yeah I went so I finished school when I was 18 years old and I yeah, I really want to like play cricket overseas and basically become a pro in cricket. Um, so where all my friends went to uni and stuff like that, I chose to to go to. So I started in Tasmania, and I played cr club cricket there. I trained with the state squad as well. I got invited, uh, which found it like really cool because it was my first time being part of like a professional environment, professional setup. Uh, the coaches and players I learned a lot from. Uh, and yeah, no, it was a really, really cool experience. Uh, and then after that, uh, the year after I signed a contract with the Queensland uh, Fire in Brisbane. Um, so I played there for one year as well. Uh, and then my third year in Australia was in Melbourne, uh, which I really enjoyed as well. <laughs> and then COVID came, obviously, and then I went back to Europe. Uh, and that's how I got into cricket in England. Yeah, so tell us about obviously playing for Northern Diamonds um, and that experience so far. Yeah, um, well, it's my third. This is gonna be my third year for the Northern Diamonds. My first year as a fully pro, and the two previous years was like on a uh, pay-to-play contract. Um, and I, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, as I said, I always dreamed about becoming a pro when I was younger, and I think if yeah, if you play a sport you yeah you want to be like really good at it and stuff like that um yeah so for me to fully focus on my cricket and and train yeah with like the best coaches in the world and the best facilities and stuff like that um yeah it's really good for my uh, cricket development and what was it like moving from the netherlands to yorkshire <laughs> Yeah, it was really different. Well, I was used to uh, like being on my own, as in living on my own, not with my parents and stuff anymore uh, in Australia and, and away from home a lot and stuff like that. Uh, so when COVID came and I had to come back to Europe, I moved. Yeah, I well, moved to Yorkshire. I, I was there in the summer, basically. Um, but now we found a house for the rest of the summer with a friend, well, a teammate of me. Um, but the two countries are really different. Uh, in Holland, I'm used to just like step on my bike and 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 ride ride around the city and and stuff like that. Whereas England is the distance are are way bigger. Um, if you guys say, "Oh, I need to go somewhere around the corner," you can drive for 20 minutes. Where if here you drive for like two hours, you're out of the country. Uh, so that is that is pretty. 
also the people and stuff are different. But the thing yeah. is, Yorkshire people in, in England have this uh, reputation for being quite blunt. They, mm. they say things as they are. Uh, and I, I, and the, the Dutch people I know are quite similar to that as well. That they're quite um, direct people in the way that they talk. So maybe there are kind of cultural similarities to a Dutch person being in Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> <laughs> And um, obviously you got a professional contract at the end of last year. What difference has that made to your yeah. cricket and your training, things like that? Yeah, as I said, like to fully focus on, on cricket, I um, so we contract start November till November. Uh, in over, I was away with the Dutch team to Zimbabwe. We had the World Cup qualifiers there. Uh, so I started in basically in January because after that I had COVID and then uh, Christmas at home and stuff. So I started to train up uh, back with them in on, in January. So to be able to have the full preseason in a professional setup and stuff, and yeah, literally fully focus on cricket, hit balls every day. Uh, well, focus on fitness more. Focus on yeah, on on training with the like one to ones with the coaches and stuff. Uh, I think yeah, that's definitely yeah. Uh, yeah, something I, I found really cool as well, but also it's really good for my development as a young cricketer to, yeah, to fully focus on, on one thing. And um, last summer was the first year of the 100 and you played for Northern Superchargers. Uh, talk, like, talk to us a bit about your experience in the 100, because I guess for everyone it was something completely brand new. Yeah, new competition is always, uh, yeah, exciting, I think. Uh, it was such an amazing, well, six weeks. Uh, we played on like, yeah, world class grounds. We had, uh, yeah, good coaching facilities. The players I played with, like, likes of Jemima Rodriguez, uh, Laura Wood, uh, Laura Harris was there as well. Uh, but to also play against like the superstars is, yeah, it's a really great experience. We played, yeah, well, as I said, like really good pitches, cool grounds. The crowd was was amazing as well. Uh, all the fireworks and stuff and everything, yeah, around it was, uh, yeah, was was really cool. And um, yeah, hopefully this year's hundred can bring uh, can bring the same excitement. It was amazing, wasn't it? We, loved it. we didn't actually get to see Northern play, um, but I really, oh, really? But we 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 saw went to two games, didn't we? we went yeah. we saw. And Manchester Originals against Trent Rockets, and then we went the, oh, elim yeah. the Eliminator. So, uh, so that was Northern Diamonds just missed out on the Eliminator yeah, against the Phoenix. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah we love that game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. I, I suppose one of the highlights for me watching it on TV was was to see Jamie Rodriguez ninety two, uh, which I just yeah, was she's an unreal player. She? She's so good. And um, next year, well, in fact, this year even, you're going to be playing for Birmingham Phoenix, which is very exciting because we we uh, we live in Birmingham, so we're going to definitely get. Oh there. really? Yeah. Um, oh, you should watch some games then. Yeah, no, we definitely will. Um, so, what are your thoughts about going into next season? Obviously, it's a completely new team to your team before, and also there's some very very exciting overseas. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm really looking forward to to spend the well month was then uh, September in Birmingham um, yeah we've got some really exciting overseas players uh, I think it's really good to also play in a new team new environment to learn from different people and yeah I think I can learn a lot from all the um, national and international stars uh, playing for the Phoenix this year uh, so I can't yeah I can't wait to wear orange this year and um, yeah, hopefully we can lift the trophy with uh, with the Phoenix in terms of like international tournaments, there's obviously the prospect of cricket being in the Olympics. Um, how do you, like, for specifically Dutch cricket, what do you think the impact of having like a global tournament would be in the visibility and things like that? I think, well, I think then, yeah, they need to change a lot of things to actually think about going to a World Cup and stuff like that. Um, Where is... Well, Holland is not professional at all. Uh, so, yeah, people work beside of cricket. Um, where, if you look at the England setup and stuff, um, the better structure, uh, yeah, we don't really have good facilities. There are only a couple of 
grass pitches in in Holland. Um, and yeah, so I think the next step going forward before thinking about going into into a World Cup or the Olympics or like tournaments like that, I think we need to yeah um, get some more in in the women's game. We need to get some some contracts uh, to be able to yeah to focus cricket, but also play more games on a high standard of cricket. Um, there is all the countries around us are getting more and more. Uh, professional uh, and to yeah keep that gap basically uh, as small as possible um, yeah we need to do the same that, that'd be great I mean we uh, with our podcast we keep our eye on the podcast charts and it tells you uh, where, where you're at for in different countries and we actually have quite a lot of listeners in the yeah. Netherlands who, who listen to our podcast oh really so if, if any of those are, are listening to this and uh, young girls in uh, different cities in the Netherlands who want to get involved in cricket, what do they need to do? Well, I think, uh, especially in, in like Holland and stuff, I'm from an associate nation, uh, but I think you can still like really achieve the goals and stuff like I done if you, if you well, train hard, create the opportunities and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really like to inspire young girls to pick up the game and, and yeah, to, to get involved, then I think in England, loads of uh, people are going to schools to, to explain like what's it about. And I think, it's, yes, it's so much fun. And I think, yes, yeah, it's, it's a really girls game as well. Uh, so I think, yeah, all, all young cricketers definitely need to need to pick up cricket. And um, a really exciting tournament happening, in fact, very soon is a uh, fair break tournament in Dubai. Um, obviously, yeah. part of that. So tell us a bit about um, your thoughts ahead of it. And yeah, cause it, it seems really exciting. Yeah, the tournament in May, it's the first uh, yeah global tournament uh, hosting by like, it was supposed to be in Hong Kong. Uh, but because of COVID, you had to quarantine for three weeks in a hotel. Uh, so they moved it to Dubai. Uh, yeah, and I think it's, yeah, definitely next step going. Basically, fair break is like, yeah, stands for like equal chance and opportunity for like every, like every player, basically. And I've been with them from the very beginning. Sean Martin, he's like the founder of fair break. Uh, he's been like really, yeah, really good for me. Uh, in my development as a cricketer, he created opportunities for me uh, all around the world, basically where I was to to organize like training sessions and and play games and stuff and yeah, create exposure and and all that stuff. Uh, it's a two week tournament. Um, my team just got announced last week. I'm in the tornadoes with Sophie Devine as well, where, and she's playing for the for the Phoenix too this summer. Um, yeah, so it's a really exciting tournament and. Um, yeah, it's in two and a half weeks time, so I, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I love I love the vision behind it, and I think it because what it does is it gives an opportunity to players from the associate nations to to get that yeah definitely of playing at a really really high level. And you know, I guess you're fortunate, but slightly unusual that you get to play in in the hundred, for example, whereas there are not many other players from associate nations that get that chance. So this, to me, it seems like a really really good way of growing the game globally and see you know, players from other European nations. So uh, Tina Goff is going to be there, isn't she, for example, who we've had on our podcast before. Roberta yeah. from Brazil is going to be there. So so loads of, I think, quite significant mm -hmm. people who then go, go from that to, to help improve the game in their own nations. Yeah, exactly. And to share a dressing room with them and, and stuff on tournaments like this is it's really excited. And I think... Uh, and learn a lot from all the, the big names on the tournament. So looking ahead to the next season, what are some of your like aims for the entire season? Um, I think, well, being like a uh, value player in like all formats of cricket in, in the teams I play for. Um, and I really, yeah, as I already said, I really want to inspire young cricketer, young girls to, to get involved in him and um yeah so that those two things are i think my my future well future goals but the things i want to um how do you call it future aspirations basically in in cricket 
And will Northern Diamonds finally win a final this year? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, third time is lucky, they say. Uh, so hopefully we can, uh, we can lift the trophy this year and uh, bring some steel for our home. Because in fact, the Rachel Hay Flint final is at Lords this year. Yeah. So it'll be very exciting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, really exciting uh, place to play cricket. So, um, yeah, no, definitely hope, hopefully this time, uh, yeah, we focus a lot during the winter on things we can improve on and stuff like that. So hopefully, um, yeah, it will pay, uh, pay its price this year. And hopefully it won't be against Southern Vipers because I do not want to see them in another final ever no, again. They've had, They've had too much. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> And, and in terms of the Netherlands, what, what uh, fixtures have you got coming up in the near future for, for the Netherlands? Uh, I think we've got some series uh, during the winter. Um, against the problem a little bit is that a lot of games and stuff is based on ranking. Mm -hmm. uh, loads of invitations for, for game, games against like bigger, bigger countries. Uh, yeah, it's based on invitations and on rankings and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't qualify for the qualifiers the end of this year, um, but hopefully uh, next, I think next year is another 50 over qualifiers. So hopefully we, we qualify for that one. Uh, this, this year is basically just series and, and stuff. But yeah, I play, I play now my, most of my England. So as long as it's not clashing, I, I can play with the Dutch team. But yeah, my phone now is, is basically on playing cricket in the UK. Esther, thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and um, enjoy your, your day. Yeah, and all the best for the fair break tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing how you perform in that. That was brilliant to talk to Stair. It was very good, yeah. I didn't really know anything about Dutch cricket, so mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. Um, and we might have another Dutch player later on in the series, so yes, never know. Yes, that would be great. And yeah. uh, definitely focusing in on fair, fair break, break Yeah, over players. the next couple of weeks. Uh, and really looking forward to that tournament. And mm -hmm. um, But yeah, I, I anticipate that over the whole of season 11, we'll be talking to a mm -hmm. number of fair break players. Yeah. So come back next week and we'll have another fair break guest for you. Um, in the meantime, you can follow our social media. So that is across pretty much everywhere, North Child Podcast, apart from Twitter, which is OO Child Podcast. So our Twitter is a lot more tentative than everywhere else. So always tweeting. So make sure to follow us over there. Mm -hmm.